I've been called a trick photographer. At first I was kind of offended by the term, but now I've come to embrace it. It does sum up some of the reasons some people like my pictures, because they're novel. There's a degree of fun, or you get to search, and it's a little bit like a puzzle, like a good trick. When I want to describe my Selected People series, I say that it's like a still time-lapse photograph, smushed in together in one picture. It, what inspired me was I was sitting outside and just wondering what happened over time there, what happened over a hundred years. You know, in a hundred years, it would be filled up black with people all covering every single inch making shadows and overlapping and, you know, just a dense block of people. And I realized, well, I could capture some of that with a camera. I guess what I'm looking for is a place overlooking a certain kind of activity where there are a lot of people, but they don't clump up too much. For me, that's the easiest kind of way to work, but sometimes I also like confusing setups, so we may look for either one. I guess I'm going to take a look over this interchange here. I can see it's not very busy so that I know people will cross diagonally and I often look for places that have kind of an appealing formal setup to them. Once I set up, I leave it for a long time. Well, I probably take 100 to 300 pictures. I'd like to have people whose faces were obscured because I think that might be funny. I'm looking for any kind of interesting clothing or behavior because if you look down here it's just like the most ordinary pedestrian thing in the world but I find all kinds of interesting things happen even when you think it's just nothing. And the first thing that I do is I just start flipping through to see what I have and I go fast and I look for coincidences or things I might be planning. I'm gonna mark it with a little Photoshop star here. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to arrange people very close to this pole with a lot of people's faces blocked by the pole, but maybe I want to form a vertical line and you know that's just the first idea that came to me. So to give away my any technical tips that I might have is what I've done is I've copied the whole frame and then before I prepared this just I found a blank image when nobody was walking and it was the calmest uh, no, the fewest number of cars were parked. Just pasting that whole frame over, blocking it out, and then masking her back in. And people talk about the magic of an image coming up in the dark room. You know, it's almost an identical feeling to me when I start to drop people in like this. I can work on it for months. It's a little bit like a painting. There's no time. You have to stop. You can always keep going and improve it until you just say, I'm done, and then I'm done. I have only one big rule, which is that I don't change anything. Always leave things in their original position. Important to have at least an aspect of truth and realism to my work. One of the key feelings I get when I look at my own work is that there are all these tiny little moments, unimportant moments that pass and are never recorded by anybody, you know, even people with their snapshot cameras. Nobody cares about a woman who's walking down the street and the wind blows her hair just like that or she curls her wrists. You know, it's just not important. Or you... So for me, it captures just a little bit more of that than is available any other way. And nobody is going to go and spend hours looking at all these tiny little moments and I can compress them and smush them together and compile them so people can look at them.